Hey, it's Alana Casey with Lip Biggie Big, and I want to do a quick tutorial on wrist straps. Wrist straps, um, I see so many people use them and not really getting the full benefit out of using them. They're a training tool, just like any other training tool, knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, whatever. So um, depending on how you use them, they may or may not be helpful. So I'm going to demonstrate with my wrist straps. These are, I believe, 28 inches long. I prefer slightly longer because I can always wrap them differently um, to like imitate having a shorter wrap versus if they're too short, you know, kind of screwed. Anyway, um, the first way I'm going to do it is um, wrapping your wrist as if you were going to bench press. Uh, when you bench press, basically the difference is that you don't want any wrist mobility. So the three ways I'm going to do, one is more specific to bench pressing, the second one will be more specific to overhead pressing or jerking, and then the third one, um, single arm dumbbell overhead pressing. So each one I do slightly differently. Um, for when you do bench pressing, you want zero flexibility in your wrist. You don't want your wrist to be able to go like this because you want to just be able to focus on one, um, one kind of axis of force, which is going straight up. So if your wrists are moving side to side, that's going to change the forces that are driving the bar straight up. You're no longer pushing it straight up because your wrists are rocking. So your wrist wrap prevents that. Um, so first thing you do, um, well, the difference is you're gonna wrap it up higher, slightly higher than the next two. So when I'm done, I'm gonna have them kind of across my lower palm and then the bar will sit right in here. So I'll start by just wrapping them loosely um, and then I'm going to unwrap them and use my other arm to wrap around to get them tight. So I'm going to go around once, pulling the fabric not too tight, and I've just gotten it a little tighter. That's all I've done. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to crank it harder now. And when I go around my first one revolution, I'm going to make sure that your wrists are perfectly straight when you're doing this. Because if you cock your wrist as you're wrapping, you're defeating the purpose, right? So make sure your wrists are perfectly straight, and then on this first one, I'm going up pretty high. Come around again, still pretty high. Now I'm going to start to go down a little bit more. And this is a pretty good wrap, actually. Uh, it's And then, of course, you want to tuck in this little guy here because it'd be illegal in most federations to have him out. But whatever, you, you know, you can tuck him in. Um, after you grab your wrist, it should be really pretty challenging for you to straighten your hand because the pressure of the wrap should keep your hands kind of uh, <laughs> in, I guess. Um, so I can't move my wrist hardly at all, just a little tiny bit. Um, I guess I could do it slightly tighter if I wanted to. But I got a perfectly straight wrist now, and because I wrapped it high, I have less wrist movement and flexibility. So that's good. Now I'm going to wrap, and kind of similarly to knee wraps, um, your, your wrist wrap should not really be too comfortable. If you, can leave, if you can leave your wrist wrap on through like three different sets, it's probably, you're probably not using it effectively. Uh, the next way I'm going to wrap it uh, is if I were doing overhead presses. So when I'm doing overhead presses, depending on how I'm doing it, my, if my elbows are up, I want to be able to have more flexibility in my wrist. Um, so I'm going to achieve that same thing. Wrap it once, unwrap it around my own hands. Uh, instead of wrapping twice up high, like I did the first time, I'm going to wrap once high and then start to go significantly lower. So if I start up high, do one around high, and then I'm going to bring down the wrap so that it's right below my wrist. So this way I have only one wrap up high and the others are right below. So now I have a lot more wrist movement in this position, but it still is going to give me support when I'm going to, once I get the bar up, mainly in lockout, so it's really helping you um, to have, to not be worried about your wrists going back. Because after you reach about the halfway point, you basically want your wrists in a straight line. So your force is going straight up. And that's what the second wrap 
allows me to do while still having flexibility when I'm up high. The last way I'm going to wrap is if I were doing a monster dumbbell. Um, one of the problems I found while I'm doing monster dumbbell is that the big bar, the dumbbell head, is it cuts into my forearm. So when I wrap my wrist for that, I wrap it really low and I get um, one good solid high revolution and then I just bring it down low. Do my normal start. So for this one, I'm going to do one medium, medium high, same way I would for regular push press. I'm going to wrap it a little tighter up top, but then immediately bring it down low. And this is actually where I'll, I'll, how I'll wrap my wrist for an overhead dumbbell press. This way, when the dumbbell is sitting uh, on my rear delt or whatever you want to call it, um, if the dumbbell isn't cutting into my forearm, that's not something that's going to prevent me from getting wrap, reps because I have my wrap here, which is protecting my forearm, but also providing me support in my upper wrist. So that's it. Um, hopefully you learned something and one of those methods can help you out. Have a good one. Bye.